black and white beer on his back. <laughs> <laughs> New Year, why should I change? Mm. Oh, don't start oh, no, soccer so, again. So, so it's a football. Football, football club. Football. And, mm -hmm. They might be all wrong. Okay, and we are very clever. That's a one possibility. Or we assume that maybe they are not all stupid and we are not the only clever in that room. The average people in the street, they are all more stupid than my seven years old daughter. Most probably, yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> she's, she's so clever. My question would be, have we already lost that battle? This is what I love about water industry is that we're constantly seeking out and, and looking for what are they doing? What are they doing and how dare they? But then they say, oh, it's a clever idea in the end. So let's try to, to do better. You get the contract and you promise that in one point in time, very specifically with this fixed price, you have to deliver this asset. This is a lose, lose, lose situation. For me, totally overrated. Okay, that's uh, provocative. No, it's totally underrated. Oh, I thought I was going to be provocative because I agree with you again. I said oh. overrated. Well, okay. It needs time. It needs time, guys. Oh. We're in the water industry. <laughs> hey, innovation takes uh, many, many years, if not decades, in our industry. You know that. He's a positive. Thanks for sharing He's all your experiences. <laughs> so Italy, France, <laughs> off the list. What is the best business model in the water industry? Do you know? No, but I. Really? Yes, of sure I do. Well, you pretend you do, like always. Well, Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year, Antoine. Let's be polite. Welcome back the third time in Germany. Yeah, at some point you have to let me go. I, I want to go back home. I miss my children. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're happy to be here. So, welcome. Welcome again. Thanks. And what will be opening the show today with? What's your editorial? The editorial is about the water industry shouldn't educate the ordinary people about water. That's not our job. So that's no. the first thing on which I will disagree with you today. And then we go to my top three. My top three is about three water companies that betrayed us and went to the dark side of the force. And we'll discuss why they did so. Okay, very interesting. And what is the main section about? We will talk about the business models in our water industry. And I tell you what, we have a special guest as well to discuss this with you, to convince you, that, or let's say, to give you the best business model. We will talk with the CEO of the Acceptance Group. And we'll be covering four business models. So we have DBO, BOT, Water as a Service, and CapEx Sales. And I'm looking forward because you said you really know which one is the best one. Then yeah. I will Listen discuss to that with you. You're wrong, Bjorn, you know it. No, never. So, in this cold January, Bjorn, it's time for your editorial, the first of the year. I hope it will be good, I'm sure it will be good, but Bjorn, the scene is yours. Thank you very much, Antoine. Yeah, this this month, I really, and I want to start the fresh year with something I have since ever in my mind and come coming always to my mind. It is that we as water industry, we are not responsible for the education of the people about water. That is the point. Whenever it comes to the point that we need to educate the people, everybody's crying and saying, well, the water industry, you should do that. Even you last month, you said this, right? With one of your predictions, you want to get away. They're always coming, coming to us. I mean, it's not that we are not able to do and that we have the, um, let's say, the background. For sure, we could do that, but it is not our responsibility. And I will come to that in a minute. I mean, we have companies in our industry who are doing that. I mean, we all know that. I mean, we talked about that as well. It was Salem with Manchester City, uh, which is, by the way, a football club in or soccer club in... in, in oh, don't uh, start uh, soccer so, again. It's, it's a football. Foot, foot, football club football. In, in the UK. I'm not, a I'm not a football fan, right? You know that. In, in UK, I'm, and a good one. And they have this initiative that they tell the people really how to save water. And last year, there was a hackathon in Zurich. They gave a prize to a, a team which developed an app how to tell the people to save water, which which is all cool. I love all these initiatives, but I don't believe that we as industry, we are responsible to do so because what is in for us. And that's why, I mean, a company like Salem, which has multi-billion US dollars, well, they can afford that. But let's say a normal company, a mid-sized company, they don't do that because for them, there's nothing in. And that is why I'm saying it is education is by the government. 
And that's why I'm saying they need to do that. They need to hook the municipalities, to hook the utilities, and they have to tell the people what to do with the water. For sure, we have the experience. For sure, we have the knowledge. We can do it as a team. But don't blame all the time the water industry that we have to educate the people about water. Education is by the government and not by our industry. As long as we don't have any benefits out of that, why should we do that? Yes, there are companies who are doing that. And they do it good, and I like that. But they have the money for do. But don't blame the others why they don't do that. Black and white beer in his bag. <laughs> <laughs> New Year, why should I change? <laughs> I think you're partially right. Partially. Okay. Because it is not only the job of the water industry to educate people and it's not only the work of government to educate people everybody should be educating people all the time about such an important matter as water and not because water is something if we don't have it we die but because water is is a core to whatever we have in our lives i mean this microphone is water there's no microphone if there's no water your jacket is water there's no jacket if there's no water and so far and so on and people should be aware of that if a water industry company has the budget to put together a YouTube video, which is a demonstration of its product, which is awesome, which nobody's watching. Exactly. Then, do you do you know how many when you, how many views the the one of the um, YouTube videos from from Asylum and Manchester City has? Two hundred fifty, something like that. Yeah, it was nothing. M my point is. If water companies have the budget to do videos which nobody watches, they have also the budget to do videos that everybody would enjoy watching. And what's the difference between those two? It's that in one case, you just say, hey, look, actually, that one is the best, and I'm going to take my STEM stupid example I take all the time. It's the best activated carbon filter there is, there was, and there will ever be, because there is that thing at the entry which mixes it perfectly, and then in the middle, there's that thing which captures everything, and then at the outlet, there's... And so what? Who is that tailored for? Is it a professional? For a professional, he still doesn't know what is his problem at first. And maybe then if it's for a professional, what, why is it on YouTube? Why? So if it's for the general public, it why is would never, the general public... It's never for the general public. Great. So how do you educate people? How do you make bring people interested in something? You have to tell a story. And you have to go on the emotional le le level. You have to bring something. Yeah, that but, but the point is, who's responsible for that? That is the point. It's not that, sure, you have to tell a story. We all know that. I mean, you are in marketing, I am in marketing. At least you know a little bit about that. But that's not the point. The point is who is responsible for that? Everybody is responsible for that. And if you have the budget to do a product video, you have the budget to do a proper video instead of your product video and to do it in a way that you can also educate people. You're saying that even the water industry, even the small company is responsible to educate Absolutely. the people? Absolutely. Look at all the startups in the world. Mm -hmm. They might be all wrong. Okay, and we are very clever. That's a one possibility. Or we assume that maybe they are not all stupid and we are not the only clever in that room. What is the first thing they all do? They create a medium, whatever it is. Maybe some do a podcast, maybe some do a YouTube channel, maybe some do an email uh, newsletter and so far and so okay, on. And okay, your, okay, okay, your podcast, community. your podcast, what is your community? Who is your community? Who is what is your target group for your podcast? No, 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 no. It's not off topic, topic because you're topic. also with your podcast. You're addressing the water industry. You're not addressing the ordinary people who is drinking the water from the tap. Yeah. So, full stop. So, but you are saying we have to create this environment. Yes, we have this environment, but all the podcasts we have from our industry are not for the ordinary people. People, they because are all you believe that my podcast is not educating people. Of course, my podcast is educating people. When I'm saying educating people, I'm not saying that every content should be catered for the man in the street. I'm saying that my podcast is catered to educate uh, decision makers into the water industry. So those people have already a certain knowledge. So you don't start by telling them that water is H2O and happens to be sometimes polluted with some stuff and that some stuff had to, to be separated. But you're still educating them by saying, look, there is that problem but that, but out that's there. Not, but, but, that's, but that's not, never... That the, is but that's, Yeah, but that's never what we talk about. It is always, and you said it last, last month, because you got all these bloody comments I was reading meanwhile. You got all the comments and you said we need to Edu uh, uh, educate the people how water works because they have no clue. Your example is going totally in a different direction. Who is responsible to tell the ordinary people who blamed you that you are dumped whatever? Who is educating them that water is... It's a matter of layers. It's really a matter of layers. Take it is not the water industry. That's what I'm you, saying. You mentioned 
Manchester City having some of their videos with XLM having 250 views. To be fair with them, others have millions, but okay, sure. let's take that example. There are millions of water professionals, millions of water professionals. Like, I don't have the like absolute number in the world, like, like, like you and me, that I would say that maybe 50 or 100 millions people in the world work in the water sector. Roughly speaking, very roughly speaking. Mm -hmm. Just my reference there is that... I, I mean, think about the, all the municipalities we have. We have In the US, there's 1.4 million water professionals for a country which has 300 million inhabitants. So if I make the math, it's 0.3% of the population, 0.3% of uh, 8 billion people makes about this 140... Uh, okay, I think you... Yeah. Um, okay, okay. Okay, so you see what I'm, where I'm heading with. So why does not every single video on YouTube have at least these thousands of of viewers if it's scattered the right way. So what I'm saying is that you're saying we should stop with education. No, I'm, I'm not saying, saying that. It's about train no, 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 the trainer. No, no. You, you don't, you train don't, the trainer. Don't get me wrong. We shouldn't, we shouldn't stop. I'm always saying that the water industry is not responsible for that. The responsibility is with the government and they can take the water industry to leverage the knowledge and bring it to the people. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but everybody is finger pointing to the industry and saying, well, you are responsible. You have to do that. I Last year, I was in I was in Sevilla at a conference. I had a table and my topic was, how can we educate the people? And I was thinking to myself, okay, yeah, we can think about things like that. I thought but you were in I, Valencia because it's the one you were always referring to. Uh, so no, Valencia, it was Valencia, Sevilla. Valencia. I know better where you were. It's interesting. <laughs> I'm always mixing up Sevilla and Valencia. I've never been to Sevilla. Anyway, <laughs> um, and, and the, po the point is really, why is it on us? Where are these you know, round? The point is, where are these round with the with the government with the utilities, and that they can give us a call and say, "Hey, we have the round. We want to educate the people. Can you come? Can you help us? Where is that?" And that's what I'm missing. Everybody is blaming on us. It's finger pointing, saying, "You have to." I do think that. we have this repeated discussion months after months after months. The big difference between you and me is that you still believe in governments, and <laughs> I firmly believe. They failed, and if they were supposed to to do it right at some points, they would have done. I mean, governments exist for for millennia, and and, and still nobody has a clue. We never about talked about that. That that that, that you are saying, you a believer that government failed. It's our full discussion about the centralized versus decentralized, private versus public. I mean, you can take it in every single of our shows. It comes at least once where you say but, but, government should do but this. Isn't, and I said, isn't, government is never good to do that. But isn't exactly, isn't more, let's say, if you take the helicopter view, isn't the issue that we have the water industry here and we have the water communities here and we we, we don't fit together somehow? That is true. That is true. It's it's a disconnect. Is there a disconnect? We, we, we disagree on the way to connect, but I agree with you. There's a disconnect. So shouldn't shouldn't we shouldn't we bring this together, and then maybe everything is easier. To me, I'm gonna take my stupid example because that's the way I can portray it the best. I am one guy inside a five or six thousand people company. I am the one responsible for bringing GF piping system a bit forward in terms of exposure to the water and waste mm -hmm. treatment market. If I do it me all alone and I go out there and I take all the sales guys one by one and I take them to a sales school and I, I visit customers with them, we will do some results. We will have some some good cases. But that's Mickey Mouse. If instead of that, I take people, which I do know have a certain drive for education, have a certain drive for telling people some stories, and I teach those people how to teach the next people and how to teach the next people and cascade down within the next five years the entire company will have some level of exposure to what is the water industry and how do we bring it forward and then all these things which i'm absolutely convinced we can help the water industry with will be multiplied by all the people out there mm. we can which can pass on that message that is the train the trainer approach and that is really what I would love the water industry to do when it comes to all things water and not all things water because I said I'm hating the terms but really take your topic activated carbon why is it why does it exist hmm. why what's the problem tell what is the problem what is the solution today why does the solution today not work why is your solution better because it's solving for a problem the other is not solving and here's why you will sell your stuff just do this simple thing and you will have done a million ways better than whatever the government will ever say about activity carbon, which they don't even understand and know what. Now, it sure, is. they don't. They don't don't understand that because they need the expert to do that. But let's say they don't have to explain the ordinary people how activity carbon works. They have to explain that the water is, is safe and how Why they so? have to. Why so? Well, they are not interested in that. My, uh, most most of the people are my not interested. My seven years old daughter was interested to understand how an MBBR chip makes to grow biofilm. And you was proud. So right? you're saying that I was so <laughs> proud, and I was so damn proud. But 
<laughs> do you say me that the average people in the street they are all more stupid than my seven years old daughter most probably yeah yeah you're right <laughs> she's, she's so clever but but jokes aside honestly if you can interest but the, the, i think i think the point here is really the point really is here that we get the connection better to the utilities and that we are going together to the people to educate yeah, them agree I agree. That is again uh, agree. That's take, what I'm saying. Oh, let's take a, a positive e example of that. Let's take the 50 liter home coalition. Yep. What is the 50 liter home coalition doing? Is that they are going from door to door and saying, "Look, maybe we have a problem because we're using too much water. Maybe a big portion of the solution would be to just reduce the amount of water we use, but to do it in a clever way so that you don't even feel that you're reducing." And who is in the 50 liter home coalition? You have consultants, you have end users, you have industry, you have and and what are they doing? They're bringing together a consistent. Uh, message they're bringing out good communication and they are telling it at the right places so if we can do it with something like that why can't we do it for everything and sorry but who came with the 50 liter home coalition was it a utility no it was the industry building up its case and not because they are philanthropic also because they have something to sell at the end of the day but nothing is wrong in selling something if that something absolutely. is positive absolutely makes money in a good way and also carries the right message home so i would agree that you cannot put the old burden of education on the water industry that's what i said you're right good but don't wait for the government to do it no i'm not saying don't wait but let's say don't put the burden only on the water industry everybody's ping up and say you have to do that you want to and discuss Communication? <laughs> then let's close this editorial and let's move to my top three because you're going to like it. Okay, good. And there, I need your expertise. Okay. Okay, so you know the story, blah, blah, blah. It's not rigged, blah, blah, blah. We don't discuss our topics before and everything, so I'm not going to repeat it. But again, it's surprising <laughs> that we have two topics which are quite connected. Today, my top three is about three companies that betrayed the water industry by dealing with the enemy. And the enemy is bottled water. <laughs> it's going to be a bit different today because I propose you that I go through my top three mm -hmm. and I tell you why I think they betrayed us because some of these companies really like what they do. Then the discussion is about why they did it and how we can get inspired by maybe what they did mm -hmm. or maybe what the bottle industry did. And actually, my top three starts with a company called Richard's Rainwater. Richard Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater. Rainwater. Like, Rainwater. Like, okay. like, like uh, Richard. I think uh, the guy uh, who founded it was called Richard. I mean, the loan was inside uh, the, the property of a guy called Richard. And what they do is that they take rainwater. Surprise. Um, they don't take the first drops, which are supposedly polluted but once it starts raining for good after eliminating the first part they take the rest of it and they bottle it so no treatment it's uh, no no treatment no treatment uh, it's a uh, they test it it's proven to be potable and everything they bottle it in two fashion they have a can for still water and they have a carbonated one which is um, bubbling water they have these two elements and the reason why i say they are betraying the water industry is that their full marketing is around how the bottle industry is like big water like the big guys, the, the bad guys, exploiting the water left and right and, and taking water from Fiji and sending it around the world or taking water from Evian and sending it around, around the world. And I would fully agree with them, fully agree. But I just don't agree with the conclusion, which is to fight that, let's take another source of bottled water. Like, 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 like why? How is, how is that different? How is my, my bottle of Richard's rainwater so different from the Evian one in terms of impact it has straight away it was in a truck it came in a truck it was delivered to, uh, to a store and i bought it in a store their vision on the long run is to commercialize their technology to collect the rainwater to bottle it and so that you can have it in a decentralized fashion so on the long run they would be coming back to the good side of the force okay but to me right now it sounds like they are on the dark side of the force yeah I really opened your eyes there didn't i that was my number three. Number two is a company which I'm, I'm really sad to put them there because it's a company I love. Like really, I love what they do. I love the founder and what he, he's done. The company is called Bosac. And Bosac is producing packaged plants which are doing ultrafiltration, which are doing disinfection of water, which are going, for instance, in many places of Africa where they're taking whatever source of water, they put this container, the container mm. has a solar panel on the roof and that solar panel means it's fully self-sustaining. And it's really... You take that thing and they do it with a frame contract over three years where you're guaranteed that whatever water you have at the inlet, at the outlet you have drinking water and it's self-sufficient. And that's the reason why I love that company. And what do they do? They bottle water. I'm like, guys, why? 
why, why, why do you do that? And, and you can now buy bottled water from Bossac. And you can even buy it with special flavors. Like they would treat it to whatever you want. And it's not San Pellegrino, but it has the taste of something which might be a San Pellegrino, which you cannot say because there are some copyright reasons. Sure. And I'm like, why do you do that? Why, why, why do you go to the other side and the dark side of the force? Spoiler alert, I am your father. And exactly the same with my number one. My number one is source. Source is making atmospheric water generation. And it is a revolution to that extent because they're not the only ones doing atmospheric water generation, but they are the only ones to do it the way they do it, which is in a fully decentralized fashion. You're fully off grid, off the electrical grid, yeah. off the water yeah. grid. You produce water in the, in the middle of the bushes, in the middle of, of, of the Navajo Nation, in the middle of, of Australia. You are producing water. That water is drinkable and is bringing water in places which have never seen water. Awesome, guys. Love that. Might be crazily expensive, might be heavy, whatever you want. It's going to be better with time. Awesome. And what do they do? They bottle, they bottle water. water, which is called source bottled water. And it's like, why? Why are you bringing water in the middle of nowhere where you are fighting against bottled water? I mean, the enemy there is bottled water because how are these people drinking today? They are drinking bottled water or they are, they are drinking trucked water. So why do you need to be just another brand of bottled water? And no, and that's the end of my rant. I understand why they do that. The three of them, because there is this image of quality associated to bottled water. Like every time I was preparing a, a baby bottle for my, my, my two daughters and, and my, my, my son with tap water, the parents of my wife were looking at me like, oh, the crazy water guy I did again. If only he was to use Evian, like everybody's using Evian. Why does he hate his children and is he, is he using tap water? So bottled water has this image of being pure, wholesome, safer, everything premium. And we are just using that water which is used to flush the toilet. So it cannot be of the same quality. So if you're a brand, and that's now my muggle marketing understanding, if you want to market your water technology as a premium technology, you have to prove that it's so good that it can be bottled. And if it's so good to be bottled, then you can also sell the technology. So I understand why they do that. But it feels to me like they're using the dark side of the force to create some good. And the story doesn't end that well for Dark Vador in Star, in Star Wars. No! So your out. prediction for all three is it will not end good. How, how serious are they in selling the bottled water? Is it just, let's say, a marketing gimmick? Or is it really that they want to enter the market and they want to sell the, this? I think they're serious about the, the bottled water. Much more serious. I mean, I mean, the market is, is huge, right? You know that. The bottled water market is supposed by 2034 to start to be bigger than the utility water. So there will be more investment worldwide in bottled water exactly. than in utility water. So I, I do get why it's appealing. But do we want to get a share of a market which is stupidly inflated? Or do we want to to fight with our central tap water or decentralized tap water in order to, to fight this idea that bottled water is better. But today you are black and white, right? You are saying yeah. whatever comes out of the tap is drinking water and whatever is inside the bottled water is shit. But that's not... I'm not talking that, of quality. But, but I'm just saying it's 100 times more expensive. Uh, it's absolutely. 100 times more expensive. And it hurts it, every time if you want to have a bottle of water somewhere in Europe and at the airport. Yeah, and it has a stupid carbon impact because absolutely. you are just... Absolutely. Trucking water around when we have pipes, we do that pretty well. It's like, you know, there's this, this image of you have one bottle traveling, then you have two bottles traveling, and then if you had a hyperloop water, it's a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> the question really for me is how serious are they? Are they just using this as a marketing gimmick? Well, then it's, it's, it's okay. They're, they're if if they it. are really serious about that, then um, in principle, I'm not, I'm not saying that they are fighting against their own approach. Because, I mean, sometimes if you just treat water uh, or treat wastewater, it doesn't mean that you can't have bottled water. It doesn't fight all the time against each other. Because we all know that there are regions you can treat as much as you want. If you don't have the infrastructure, even if your water is as clean as possible for the drinking water, it will not end at the household clean that it can drink. California, you have good water and still 80% of the people drink bottled water. True, true. Nonsense. When I was a student in my math school, so now 15 years ago, I was living in Mulhouse. Mm -hmm. And Mulhouse had a hard time to make people drink the tap water. People simply didn't want to drink the tap water. They took the water, the same water, in the same production plant. They bottled it and they called it Eau de Mulhouse, so water from Mulhouse. And people 
bought it as if it was hot bagel. It was the but, same but the, thing. But, more aren't, aren't we back to education? Absolutely. I told you. I mean, I think about that. Last year, last year we went to Copenhagen, both together. Yeah. So what is the first thing the people tell you in Copenhagen? You can drink the water everywhere. So it is education. You have to tell the people, you have to educate them and tell them, okay, here's a bottle of water, here's tap water. This is this footprint. This is this, you know, emission. This is this price. And this is tap water. And you can drink it. It is education. If you turn this tipping point away from that everybody runs to the bottle of water, then you can have the other 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 game around that the utility market will be bigger than the bottled market again. The question really is who has to educate the people? <laughs> to me the question is even I would say darker than that. My question would be have we already lost that battle? When I was uh, in New York last year for the Rethinking Water conference, it was my first time in New York. So I thought I'm going to be a bit of a tourist. I went to Times Square and I was watching all this panels and advertising. And then I saw a big Coca-Cola advertising. It wasn't advertising Coca-Cola. It was advertising Dasani, just their water. When you have Coca-Cola and PepsiCo, which are pushing water through their marketing channels, it sounds to me like we've lost that battle. The question becomes, do you want to do judo, which is you're using the strength of the other to move him. And so you have to play mm. his game. Or can we have an alternative? And I don't know if we have an alternative. I mean, if you look at PUB, which is maybe the most forward-looking utility there is in the world, when but they want to promote new water, they bottle it. But, but they do it for marketing purpose and on but, a short but, period but, of time. But, but, but I remember some time ago, you came with a couple of numbers that we have so and so many failures every year in the water network. Mm -hmm. Isn't that exactly the reason why the people say, wow, I don't feed that water to my daughter, to my baby. I will use a bottle water. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we have a kind of, I mean, you came with that crazy idea that we all should have a kind of, let's say, uh, a treatment system under the sink, our own, to ensure that we have the treated, that the, the quality of the treated water is right? Or isn't that, let's say, we have to ensure that this kind of number you came up with, we reduce to never zero, but at least almost. Isn't that the Absolutely. way we should it, do? It starts like that. So the problem is that but then, but that then, will work only if there's money. If there's no money in the system because all the money goes to bottled water, then that will not happen. See, that's a bit of, the, of a double circle. You need to find where to start first. I mean, there, there, there's not how to start first. I mean, for, first of all, you have to educate the people really about what is inside the water. And not only, I mean, Manchester is doing that with Salem. We talked about that. How to save water. Why not telling them? how clean the water is. Because what happened then, if it is not clean, then everybody will go to Manchester and Salem and say, hey, you told me the water is clean. It wasn't clean. My some Someone went sick. And that's, every, that's what really everybody wants to avoid, that they are somehow linked to something which they are not responsible for and something went wrong. And it can go wrong. We have to be sure. It is, as I said, human nature a little bit. So I'm, I'm not saying that we lost the battle, but let's say, we shouldn't tell the people all the time how to save water. We should also tell them how the quality of the water is. Yep. So, and that's the point. Everybody's talking about, okay, shower for Which 20 is funny seconds. We had the discussion three months ago and you fully disagreed with me when I was saying exactly that, but it's good that you changed no, your mind. No, 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 You said you have- New year, new you, year. You, 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 no, no, you wanted to have something under the sink and I said that this is the most stupid no, idea. No, I said that you, you could be, it was one of the possibilities to have something under the sink. Yeah, but makes sense. And I'm not sense. sure it's the most stupid idea. <laughs> I think we, we should- review it before saying it's the most stupid idea but but you have to tell the people the idea is to say you could have like a tap which lights green when the water is good and red when the water is not good and you have but even then rely on you rely on the technology you have to, be, yeah. before that before that you have to tell the people it is always it is always good in quality go back to the to the perrier advertising in the 70s with orson wells i wasn't i wasn't born at the sun Deep below the plains of southern France, in a mysterious process begun millions of years ago, nature herself adds life to the icy waters of a single spring. Perrier. Bottled water existed before tap water. Sure. Because at the beginning, we didn't have the technological means to bring water to everywhere. To, to pipe. But when we brought the tap water every, everywhere, bottled water disappeared. And it came back because clever marketing people said, born in the depth of France, in the volcanoes and everything, that water has been trickling down through with a much better voice than mine because it was Orson Welles. But if we go back to, to those roots, I mean, people have this magic taste in the water which comes in a bottle. And some bottles of water are not drinkable. Some bottled water have been maybe drinkable when they were produced, and then they were stored in plastic bottles outside in the sun for two months or three months. And then guess what? 
probably don't want to drink that water anymore. Sure. So, but it, the, the issue is also, I mean, if you have a failure in a network, if you have a failure, for instance, on a, on a warship, I, I, I read an article three months ago, it was in October last year, one of the Abraham Lincoln one of these warships from the US was contaminated with, contaminated with E. coli. You have it in the news. So the people, they read that and they what, what is the first thought they have? I can't drink the tap water anymore. That is the first thought. And that's why the bottled water industry is becoming so important, or let's say not important, but let's say they play this role that they are bigger than the utilities. So we have, first of all, we have to educate the people that the water is safe and drinking. And then on the other hand, we have to ensure that what we promise, that we deliver that. And so to bridge with what you were saying in your editorial, I think that's the reason why the water industry has to educate as well, because we are defending our cake. If we don't educate the people that tap water is good, that point of use water is, is good, that point of entry water is good, that decentralized water is good, then at some point, whether we all work for uh, Evian, Dasani, Fiji, or whoever, or we don't have a job anymore. Yeah. So we have to be fighting aside with the government to say that it is better as a society that we have a full system which is maybe better than just bottled waters driving around and taking water from Fiji in 2023 and putting it in a boat and having that carbon impact and having in the supermarkets like the water bar like the water bar with 50 different brands like like I care it's water but you know that there's a business model memory. I do know. I do know. This yeah. was so crazy to see. But anyway, good. we agree on that. <laughs> but talking of business models, that makes for a smooth transition. That is really something I'd like us to discuss today. Perfect. And that's a good thing because that's our deep dive. Absolutely. Let's, Let's move go. To that. The cities of our world are constantly growing. As a result, the demands on water treatment are changing as well. The amount of wastewater and therefore the purification process need to become more efficient. For that there is a simple idea with an amazing effect. Especially in densely populated areas, the operators of water treatment plants face special challenges. Increasing throughput volumes require solution with high capacities. However, the expansion of a plant is very expensive, requires a lot of space and is often made more difficult by environmental regulations. Therefore, it is the best idea not having to expand the plant, but simply to be able to optimize it. With the Passivent Hydrograv Adapt system, the Acceptance Group offers an innovative but state-of-the-art concept that makes water clarification more efficient. The patented system ensures that the water flows in as calmly and deeply as possible. That means that the sludge overflow and flock discharge through secondary clarifiers can be consistently avoided, leading to a notable increase in the capacity of the system. This improves the flow rate significantly and makes the clearing process more efficient, without adding extra tanks to the existing plant. Set up for the future with the passive and hydrograv adapt. Okay, so we were just discussing business model and that makes for a smooth transition over that deep dive. And we have a guest. Hi, Baldassar. Thanks that you could join us and host us here. We had the little speech about acceptance just before, so we have a good idea about your company. But actually, I heard that you have some clever ideas about business model and we want to make a game with you. And that game is a bit like overrated or underrated. And then we discuss about business models. Is that fine with you? That's totally fine. So thanks for being here. It's an honor for us to host the water show, Björn, Antoine. And uh, yeah, let's see if my ideas uh, are deemed to be clever also after this. Uh, so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> the good thing is that usually Björn and me, we disagree. And it's a one against one. And now you're the one which can make the full difference because it's going to be either 3-0 or 2 against 1. And hopefully you're against Björn. But it's, it's a little bit interesting. I mean, he's Italian. Is he more on the German or on the French side? So I we, will, we, we, the we will see in a minute. Eh? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. Interesting. <laughs> you, were, you were about to launch me into bad jokes, but but I don't want to speak word <laughs> one and word one two. So <laughs> let, let's not do it. We have four business models exactly. on our plate. You want to present them shortly? Well, the first, the first is to clearly we are talking about capex sales, right? So that means we are exchanging a product against money. So that's that's uh, one of the oldest one. So yeah, underrated, overrated. Balasara. Still underrated, I would say. Underrated. Interesting. What do you say? I would say overrated. I say, oh, really? I say underrated. I expected you to say underrated, <laughs> so that's why I'm a bit the contrary. Let, let me start and then you can, you can build on it. I think in many of our traditional water industry companies, CapEx sales is just a go-to. Many have a hard time to figure out there's something beyond that. So that's why I would say overrated, because to me, it's like for many, it's the only way to go. And I would expect that there are other approaches, which I don't know if they're more clever or not, but at least they do exist. But I'd be curious to know where, where you see it's 
underrated? Yeah, so um, why I say it's still underrated, uh, I think that the openness of municipalities uh, and industries to regard CapEx acquisitions or uh, CapEx on the buy side, to regard it more broadly is increasing. However, it's just, as you say, uh, Björn, currently the perception is it is cost against a good that is comparable. Absolutely. Um, and what we do is we try not to be comparable in the end. So it's uh, we're playing a bit uh, games on the buy side, on the sales side. So I say it's still underrated because the perception on the buy side is changing towards a more sustainable capex decision making. Process. What is a more, more sustainable cap capex decision making? That goes beyond the, uh, I compare the CapEx uh, as of today, one machine with the other. I compare it with how is it, how is the durability also beyond the five year warranty period? How does it help my asset to grow? How does it help my asset to increase my footprint without changing, um, yeah, some, Oh, is it that but is, you're cheating. I'm sorry, uh, because if you're looking beyond the capex, then it's no longer just capex. It's something. I mean, total cost that, of ownership, or that's why I said still underrated. It is moving uh, in that oh, okay, in that direction, but it has not found its way because in the end, it's still what uh, governs this uh, capex sales process is cost, cost, cost. Absolutely, cost. and we need to address both. If you want to be fit for what comes beyond capex sales, you need to be able to uh, participate also in that CapEx sales business. Okay. Uh, for, Does for, that make sense? It makes. For, for me, it's clearly underrated because, I mean, we are we are now in the, somehow in the digital age, right? So we have a lot of other business models. We will talk about this in a minute. But only because of the reason that, let's say, we are now moving forward doesn't mean that the CapEx sales is outdated. I mean, this we, we are using CapEx sales since, since the Stone Age. We are exchanging goods. Right now it is money against a product just because of that we are now somewhere different in, in terms of digitalization doesn't mean that we have to go over that. So it's still valid from my perspective. The question I have, Baldazar, is, I mean, you're very often in the municipality. That means you are always or quite quite often with, with tenders. How does this change? I mean, we all know that in, in the past it was always CapEx. It was CapEx the lowest bidder wins. How really is OPEX, sustainability, durability come into play nowadays if it comes to a new tender? I think uh, when it comes to the tender, it's too late to propose solutions that could improve the decision-making process on, on the customer side. So I think the CapEx sales process itself is also a great contributor to um, what I define making this a competitive market. I think it's a good thing that uh, we have a competitive market because this drives R&D, right? When it comes to tenders, I think it's too late to propose innovation when the tender is ready. That's why you have to work before that with design institutes, with universities, with decision makers, with peers on the water show to make sure that uh, the perception and the attraction of what you can propose yeah. Yeah, goes beyond a capex sales. Let, let me be the, the devil's advocate here because specification bending or specification writing. I fully understand why it's good for a company. I'm the first one to do that w with my company. It's there's an element of advice which is fully to the benefit of the customer. I fully get that. But there's also an element of you're trying to write something where you do know that your competition cannot compete with you on that level because you're proposing something with your R and D. You have been differentiated. You're going into yeah. a direction that they cannot really go on the same level than you, and then you, you bring that a bit to your home game, and then you have better chances on win, winning the, the tender. Yeah, to, to me it sounds a bit like it's always a, a mixed feeling. On one end you're adding value, on the other end you're also helping yourself. Is that bad? Is that a contradiction? Um, I, don't, I don't perceive it as a contradiction. You're right. uh, to the contrary, I think that um, if we look into our industry, and I love our industry, it's like, you know, uh, sometimes uh, we are ahead, sometimes others are ahead, but I think exactly that difference is what drives the innovation because we always try to surpass the other in getting ahead again. So my perception is positive. So I'm, I'm happy when I see competitors having been able to um, 
position themselves with a competitive edge that we do not have because it challenges my organization to grow better and to develop something new. It's a question of perception. And I think this is what I love about water industry is that we are constantly seeking out and, and looking for what are they doing? What are they doing and how dare they? But then they say, oh, it's a clever idea in the end. So let's try to, to do better. So again, I think to the benefit of water in the end, we have to keep that um, going. And there will always be a temporary advantage for um, each of us. And but, that's okay. But but I think the, we shouldn't underestimate really the utilities. They are not so stupid that they don't realize, okay, I got this specification if I that put in, then GF wins or acceptance wins or whoever wins. I mean, they are not so stupid anymore. Meanwhile, they're saying the opposite. They're very clever. Yeah, I mean, because they have they have models, meanwhile, that, that they rank you and CapEx, OPEX, reliability and so on, sustainability becoming more and more important that they have these kind of mass model. Yep. And in the end, do you have a number? And CapEx is just one, which is pretty important still. But it's just one. Can you open a subcategory in CapEx? Because CapEx, there's CapEx and CapEx. If I take my example, that GF piping system as CapEx, I can sell you a ball valve. There, I would say the model is clearly overrated because that means you really have to understand what a ball valve is mm. to take the best decision. But I could also try to sell you a solution where you don't care if it's a ball valve, if it's a diaphragm valve, if it's whatever, because your water is conveyed from A to B and then you give me the liberty to bring you with what I think is the best solution. So it's still a CapEx sales. I don't take any engagement over the long run or whatever. I just give you some hint at why it's better. Yep. And in that sense, maybe then CapEx is underrated because here I'm selling you a solution and I'm adding value. But that is, I would say, CapEx 2.0. It's moving out from products and going to solution. Everybody claims to do that, but who really does it? Is it really all the people who claim to do it do it or is it a bit overhyped? That's, um, that's a very good question because it is exactly uh, the point where uh, from 1.9 to 2.0, as you uh, call it, you can be stuck in the middle from the very traditional mm. uh, model of, let's call it eBay model, huh? three, two, one, uh, best prize wins to, hey, I have a solution for you that is uh, contributing value to your uh, total asset. It's, again, is it a bad thing? I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's an evolution. Uh, everybody claims it. But in the end, Antoine, and this is also what I love about the water industry, only the best will make it. So if you claim you have a solution, you will be tested also for the solution. That is also uh, what our industry stands for. That, that's, that's perfect because we have a transition to the next business model, which is DBO. That means we're talking about design, build and operate. And isn't that really that now we have to prove that it works? Okay, let's maybe take a definition step here. Design, build, operate. How long are we operating in DBO? Oh, well, for a longer period. What is longer period? I mean, it's, it's a contract. It's a contract after, after warranty that you operate for five years, 10 years, 15 years, whatever. Okay. That just, is just wanted to, to have it clear just because it changes a bit. The, so overrated, underrated? What do you think? For me, clearly <laughs> underrated. <laughs> clearly, you have to look at your notes. <laughs> <laughs> clearly underrated. But it's our? For me, it's also underrated. <laughs> Okay, I agree with you. Underrated. That was so, clearly underrated. Yeah. Why, why is it underrated? There was a study in the US who showed that if you do just the build, you have like, let's take a base of 100 in cost. If you do design build, you win like 16%. And if you go to design build operate, the overall total cost of ownership over the lifetime of the asset goes down by 32%. Mm -hmm. So it means that at the end of the day, for the end user, it's much cheaper and cheap is a word i don't like to use a lot because to me it's not the right way to measure things but what's interesting there is that oftentimes dbo is maybe cheaper for the end user but brings also more money to the person who takes the dbo contract so it's a really a win win and so to me dbo is really interesting because you cannot just take stupid design decision by thinking oh that's going to be someone else's problem because that someone else is you yeah so you have to be accountable you have skin in the game I heard what you said about CapEx, and I heard that you probably have your reputation in the market and everything, and you don't want to destroy that. But still, to me, it's even stronger when all of a sudden, if something screws up, well, you're the one guilty. So you have to pay yourself for your mistakes. Exactly. Same, same for me. That's the reason why it is absolutely underrated. And the other thing is why I think it's underrated is we have an element here which is called partnerships. Mm -hmm. we, we, have, we had this some time ago in Copenhagen. They were all talking about partnership because a DBO, mostly you cannot do alone. Maybe you need another company, you need an operator, you bring together 
that you can offer a solution, a DBO solution to the end client. Mm -hmm. And then it makes sense. Uh, we, have, we have seen this a couple of times that you are offering the design and build, but for the operating, you take another company into and then you go together to the client and say, well, that's our solution. So here it comes again, the partnership element. And that is really for me, from the water perspective, a very cool thing. But you're the CEO of a company. When you go into DBO, that means you engage the liability of your company over 5, 10, 15 years. So that means your risk level goes much higher. Is that a concern? Of course. That would be a concern uh, for acceptance group, uh, for sure, because we are not a, a design-built company. As equipment manufacturer, we see the DBO companies as our clients. Mm -hmm. However, I feel that the DBO model makes the sustainable part of the decision-making process very tangible to the decision maker. Because as you said, if he screws up at, at, at the beginning, um, he's going to pay the consequences. Yeah. And um, it's a win-win. And what you said, Antoine, is, is also very important that the end user in the end, it's us. Uh, because when we talk about water utilities, uh, wastewater treatment plants or desalination plants, whatever, it affects your daily life. We could do another show probably about the price of water. Is it the right? But This is a, a different subject again, but it affects your life, quality and price. I feel that um, the, the DBO process, and I feel that the longer the period is that you have to operate or you are allowed to operate a plant, is also making this process more efficient and more sustainable. Why? Take the other extreme, the old EPC model. Hmm? Okay, you get the contract and you promise that in one point in time, very specifically with this fixed price, you have to deliver this asset. This is a lose, lose, lose situation and has vast majority of my experiences uh, around EPC with fixed price contracts, negative, totally negative. Uh, although for us as equipment manufacturer, okay, we have stepped in many times after the disaster, after it was screwed up and have then improved. Not only us, many other equipment mm -hmm. manu manufacturers as well. Again, DBO, why, why underrated? Because I think it uh, stretches and it, 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 it breaks open the problems of denying complexity, denying functionality and denying sustainability in the EPC fixed price model. You mentioned how a DBO wouldn't be directly something for acceptance because that is more, more of your customer doing that. Nevertheless, I would expect them to come back to you and to say, look, we do a back to back. So of course we are still doing the DBO, but you take ownership and you take yeah. also a liability yeah. and a guarantee over 10, 15 years and you have to debate and discuss and of all course. Does that happen? We do that, yeah. We do that and um, you mentioned also partnerships. Uh, we have also entered into partnerships with some bigger French companies. <laughs> the red or the greens? <laughs> 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 But it, that's exactly always the case, right? If, if, if you are, let's say, an operator, you always want to have this kind of back-to-back -back guarantee to the supplier. And that is, that is a very crucial thing because this is also which differ differentiate the one from the other. Some are giving that Some are having for that a high price. Some are doing that because of partnership reasons or whatever, right? So, and that's really, for me, really an enabler to play in the, in the Premier League. Okay, now let me play again the devil's advocate. As always. I mean, I was working for one of these French companies mm. and they had a full department of people who were specialized in writing the contracts so that you take a lot of guarantees, but honestly, the chances that they apply, it has to be like it happens on a day where there's full moon, where the water is at that concentration, which never happens and so far and so on. So there's also a bit of a game there of... Yeah. What, was, what was the company again? Who's doing that? <laughs> <laughs> they don't exist anymore. They've been acquired by the Reds. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old company. It's not it's, a new. Yeah. It's not a new. And I'm sure um, they don't do that anymore. They changed everything when I left, probably. <laughs> so, <laughs> but just to say that the even the most virtuous business model is just as virtuous as the people involved within the business model. So just to to put some frame on that, I don't want to do some angelism and say that there is one which is no. You're right, and um, two two aspects. So um, on on what you said, it is an opportunity. I think mm. for companies to put their money where their mouth is. Yeah, yeah so right. it's, it's an opportunity because we do that. We have no issue with claiming 
um, and putting also our money where our mouth is. And we do that mm -hmm. uh, all the time. On the other hand, I also agree, um, Antoine, with, with your comment. Um, it's a pity, I think, and there is an evolution also towards more engineering and less contracts or less legal games. Um, you know, it's when, when, when you have project managers that are engineers and they want to do well and they want to uh, focus on a good outcome, always in a good frame uh, with good intentions, but they have to deal with the feeling that creates like, oh, my counterparty is trying to trick me. Hmm. I think this is denying partnership. But I have a strong feeling and also about the, the big ones, also the reds, the greens, whoever, <laughs> that this attitude is changing. Why? Because it does not bring the, re it's not a result orientation. It's a CYA perspective yeah. that is vanishing, I think, because we have realized focusing on result mm -hmm. adds value. And if it adds value, then we have something to share. And then we come into this win-win win situation okay hopefully. let's let's jump to the next which is bot or boot so that means build own build operate own and transfer or build operate and transfer so that is a little bit the the counterpart i would say to dbo so well again to be clear on the on, on the difference i would say that bot if i'm right it's about a shorter time. Absolutely. So you huh. would be doing a BOT over one, two years, warranty. while the DBO would be over 10, 15, 20 exactly. years. So okay. the war so the warranty, not normally the warranty, after the warranty, you have a contract of one, two years, you disappear. For me, clearly uh, underrated, and I have a totally negative example I can bring in a minute. What do you <laughs> say? Overrated. Overrated. Interesting. I would agree with Buren. That doesn't happen that often. I would mm -hmm. say underrated as well. Why yeah. do you say overrated? Overrated because this transfer period, this short period, is not solving one of the big issues that municipalities um, and probably also on, on, on some ends, some industrial customers have. Namely, building within their organization, building up um, expertise and stuff. Think also of demographic change in mm -hmm. Europe. I think there are a lot of customers also in the municipal sphere. They would love to get rid of this uh, operations issue. They say, well, I like your asset. I like your product. Um, I like you keeping what you have promised to deliver. Why don't you run it further for me? So I think the municipal, tea, industrial, this, um, both of them? Mo no, more on the municipal side, more on the municipal mm -hmm. side. So what I have developed um, within acceptance group when we talk about strategies um, is to get fit for a B, O and T in brackets. <laughs> so the T is like, uh, you know, for me, open you don't really define when this transfer is going to happen and uh, you should. So if, if I um, should give an advice to companies who do BOT, I would put that in as a business model to offer BOT in brackets, the T and to say, well, look, we can discuss when mm. I will transfer the asset mm. to you. It sounds to me like this, this movies, like Hollywood movies, where you have the people who hate uh, weddings and who say, I don't want to get married because if I get married, it's like a fixed contract. And then my wife is with me or my husband is with me forever until mm -hmm. I die or until we divorce. And you have the other ones saying we should renew our love every year so that I have to foster the relationship. <laughs> and it sounds a bit like that. When you say BOT with a T between back brackets, I think you would propose a new operation contract like every year, every second year. And that pushes you to keep that level of excellence so that when you renew the contract, you really renew the contract and they don't just dump you to, to get another company to operate or they operate themselves. So it's a good sign of the skin of the game I was mentioning before, because you mm. show that you trust that highly into your quality and in the operation that you don't need to have 15 years of contract to back you. You're going to operate for 15 years, but in seven times, two years, and not in one time, a contract of 15. I, I give you I give you the, the better example here. Of I've, course, better, yeah. The, no, 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 come on, come on. I, I, I give you the example. We were delivered uh, to, or let's say we delivered an, a membrane to uh, an NAPC company in India, mm -hmm. and they delivered an entire wastewater treatment plant to PepsiCo. Mm -hmm. So, and normally, the, let's say, the, the payment terms are, let's say, that if it comes to the warranty before installation, more or less 80, 90%, you have you got already because of, of the equipment. So there were 10% left. And then there was an issue with the plant. So it didn't run very well. So, and we helped them and the APC went there a dozen of times. 
And then from one day to the other, to the other, I got a call from PepsiCo and they said, the APC left. And I said, what? Never heard that. Yeah, the APC left. Because, and then I talked to the APC and he said, clearly, we have no clue what happened. <laughs> Something failed. But let's say my effort now to get the last 10% is way, 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 way higher as if I would leave right now. Mm. And that was such a bad experience I had that mm. I was thinking, who? I never had this here in Europe. I never mm. see that. I mean, we all know it. We all had projects which went really la- bad, mm. right? And we paid paid mm. money for that. It happens, right? We mm. learn from that. But that really a company say, well, okay, I go now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess it's a double-sided sword because it's an industry which is driven by references. And sure. if you do that, sure, you're going to save your your money on that project because you're not burning more money than the 10 person left in the in the payment terms but then your reputation is harmed in a way that is hard than to for people to believe that you can operate again mm. so but yeah that's more of the anecdote Bjorn. come on that's not a real example <laughs> well, well it wasn't was an example i mean the other example is always i mean if we had kind of this project where something went wrong i mean honestly all the companies i was with even if it really hurts we spent the money to get this done mm. right this is somehow the the the, the, so the behavior we have here in Europe. I would do say. we stand on the underrated, or we change our minds and we agree with Baldessar? Well, I'm 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 a little between underrated and overrated. Honestly, saying I have bad experience, but I still think it is kind of business model, right? Even even there, you have the kind of partnership element. Mm-hmm. Even even there, you have let's say you have the competences bundled together to deliver the right solution to the end user, and that is what 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 drives me as, I would say, underrated but with a negative touch somehow. I stand with my underrated. To me, it's underrated. <laughs> the skin in the game is invaluable and I would I would really stay with that one. Okay. We have a fourth one? Okay, the last one is, it is always called water as a service, which is in the end, it is somehow designed, uh, built, financed, operated, and then transferred to the class customer. DBFOMT. Bingo! <laughs> Whatever you want to call that. <laughs> The, the general public is saying water as a service. For me, if it is called like that, water as a service, for me, totally overrated. Okay, that's uh, provocative. No, it's totally underrated. Oh, I thought that was going to be provocative because I agree with you again. I said oh. overrated. Why? Overrated? Well, to me, it's overrated because it's like the magical pill. Okay. It's like, oh, we have to move out from the good old CapEx. Let's do everything as a service. And, you know, uh, the University of St. Gallen has made like a a card game. And that's a good way to teach people about these different business models. And there are 64 cards in that card game. And there are 64 different business models. And when you look at articles on on the Harvard Business Review, whatever, you can find thousands of different business models, of course, with very, very tiny differences from one to another. But still, there are lots of of nuances to the the shades of gray. And Mm -hmm. it sounds like... You could solve everything by just saying, hey, we do it as a service. But what's the service? What are you selling? Uh, is it water? Is it uh, the, the treatment? Is it energy? Is it, I mean, there's so many different things you could be. So to me, it's like the bigger box is overrated. The concept is still underrated because people don't go to the, to the bottom and the core of it. But the term as a service is just too easy. Everybody just you know what, what, drops what, it. Too easy is for me that we say water. I mean, water as a service to deliver is very hard from 90% of all the companies. Mm. So why are we not saying, for instance, a technology as a service or a product, product water as product a as a service, yeah. something like that, then I would be somehow in the middle. Because just water so, as a service, I mean, who's delivering water as a service? I have something about product as a service. Let's come back to that. <laughs> I, I agree, I agree. I agree with that. So um, I think what, what why you are saying it's... Um, overrated. Overrated, sorry. Overrated is because you are bothered with the term. It's a but buzzword. Honestly, that's the same for me. But the concept, so I was really um, more judging the concept. And I think if we look to um, the four stages that we just discussed, DB, DBO, BOT, and water as a service or product as a service or whatever as a service, or let's call it result orientation, you see that the evolution, It for me, it's just a picture of the evolution that ultimately we will come to that is selling some things in in, in cubic meters or in other KPIs to the customers. And I like that. We work together with Professor Braungart, who is somebody who is very strong in the cradle to cradle approach. And he said, hey, no one needs your products. And that made me think. 
It's true. No one needs our screens. No one needs our customers. They do not need really our screen. What they need is the results that we provide into their process. So for me, it's underrated because it is the future. I'm sure. I'm sure it will be the future because this evolution is not to stop. Huh? But I would agree with you because it's a good uh, marketing uh, analogy of the drill and the hole. Like <laughs> nobody needs a drill, everybody needs a hole. So there I would agree. And then I'll, I'll, I'll leave you the, the floor. It's just to me, the reason why I say overrated is that I mentioned I was working for a French company, I was working for, for De Grémont. De Grémont has a history in the, in the 80s, in the 90s, they were selling over the fence. It was called over the fence. Mm -hmm. So you, you take your equipment, you brought, bring it somewhere, and then over the fence, you treat the water and whatever. And they came back from that. So to me, I, I have a hard time figuring it's the future when it's already the past. Maybe it was clever all, all the way long, mm -hmm. but just because you just rebranded as, as a service, to me, doesn't make it different from what was done over the fence decades ago. I didn't want to cut you off just to drop that. For me, it really was um, over, over the last year. I, what I have seen is the people are discussing that this kind of water as a service approach. Even the industry is coming up. Hey, you, you need to sell me the water, mm -hmm. or you need to sell me the treated wastewater, whatever. But if the tender comes on the table, it is clearly a capex sales, always. And that's why I think it's overrated, because what in the end comes on the table, what we have to deliver, is capex sales. They are talking about mm -hmm. that, but they don't want that in the end. And that's why I'm thinking, okay, hey, okay. It needs time. It, it needs time, guys. Oh, wow. We're in the water industry. <laughs> hey, innovation takes uh, many, many years, if not decades, in our industry. You know that. He's a positive. And He's positive. Um, I see that. So, you know, to, to your comment, Antoine, I think every technology needs a mature environment where it can grow and where it can really be appreciated for what it is. Probably at the time with Degremont, it was too early. So they were ahead and the environment was more on the EPC side, like, hey, I have a fixed price. This was the time when fixed price EPC contracts uh, were Is paid, the time right? over? Do you see the time uh, is over? I feel that uh, the time is over because uh, asset owners are more accountable now to making things run smoothly, Okay. to um, have long-term uh, view also on their assets because the sustainability efforts this is not a buzzword sustainability it's a necessity and we are exposed into industries like the mining industry that it has undergone a very very huge transformation from a very 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 bad reputation and, and a very bad uh, footprint um, in terms of ecological footprint to hey we need to take ownership we need to take responsibility for what we do and um, especially there, and this is more an industrial, the industrial side mm. of um, of decision making. Um, I see that this is clearly heading into sell me something as a as a service. Why? Because it allows also for expertise. You know, they say, hey, you know how to treat the water. I just need the water. I don't want to build up resources and and have resources stuck with uh, things that for them are not really core business. So it's probably positive, but I think that the environment is now more mature to accept these things because the alternative, and this is also a difference to the 80s and 90s, we have now 40 years of experience with fixed price EPC contracts. And again, predominantly, I feel that the assets owner in the end, the assets owner, not the EPC, not all EPC con companies, the ones that are left probably look back with some happiness, but most of them not. I would have two questions on that. The first is in the 80s, 90s, you were like a liberal wave. A lot of people really believing into uh, the open market, mm. into uh, a very open capitalism. And it's pretty funny because three months ago, we had that debate with Bjorn and I was explaining why I think that was maybe much better than what we think it was in retrospect. But I'm surprised that that you are so positive about the fact that people are so open nowadays to having these kind of partnerships because what I hear from 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 the press in France from even in Italy yeah. even in, in the UK is that when you have a private public partnership people are looking at oh those big private companies making money again yeah. which kind of defeats the approach of as a service being seen as a win-win it's seen as oh we didn't have the money to buy it so we borrowed it from a private company, which is the devil, and now they are making money over it. And I recall personally, I was giving a conference in a university in France, and the professors stood up and said, you are like the 
devil's right hand supporting capitalism. How dare you come in a university to, to pervert our students? I was like, I was really back to, to, to those times. So if we come to as a service to them, it's like, no way. That would be on the municipal side then yeah. in the end, yeah. I agree, we have some hurdles to take and that is why we are also here. Uh, why we are, why I'm also here. I think we have also a new generation now that is taking over not only the water industry, but the industry mm. in general. And um, I believe that partnerships have to add value. And it's not about the quick euro or the quick dollar that you can uh, make. So I see that we have to be there. So good that you went there and good that you stood the ground. And I think there will be more instances where you need to uh, take the criticism. And it's a legitimate criticism because it happened. So now it's up to us. And that's why also we have decided to give ourselves this claim of responsibility. It's up to us now to build a new perception. Which leads me to my second question, which is much shorter. Yep. You mentioned R&D. R&D is often looked at something which is a product topic or a process topic or a technical topic. Do you also do R&D on business model innovation? Yes. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so we, we do that. That's why I was on this BOT side uh, also um, prepared because this is what we'll, we we also look into it. So R&D is not only linked to products or to uh, applications of your products. R&D for me means everything. R&D means putting question marks to everything. So how we do things, why we do things, and um, yeah, when we do things. So R&D, you know, this, this curiosity aspect of R&D, it needs to be in the company 360, even in financial, uh, even in the financial organization of your company. Mm -hmm. So for us, R&D is really the lifeline of this company. I hope, I hope, I hope you're really right with, with saying that there is a change by the end client, because what I see is that the end client is not ready to take the, re to give the responsibility to us. Because in the end, if something goes wrong, their production stops and they have issues with the production or they have to pay the fines to the government. If I, if I hear you right, you are very optimistic. We have a new generation coming up and they are more open to these kind of, kind of business models. That means also there's more optimism for the entire water industry. So we can come out of the niche that we are so conservative, right? One thing is we have the privilege to see what happened. Uh, so to make the experience or to learn from the experiences made over the past 40 years. That's an advantage that our generations before us did not have True. first. The second is also that there is the necessity and we all understand that, that there's the necessity to think sustainably. I think both things are coming together and, and are creating momentum. Of course, does this exclude and is everybody, hey, we're just humans in the end and we are sinners by definition. So uh, <laughs> I cannot exclude and nor will I guarantee that our generation is uh, pure and no, no way. But um, I think that based on the experiences and the necessity that comes from the outside, there is really no alternative but to trust each other and to create this responsibility and this responsible approach. So. And does the as a service approach change if we enter a word with a nine or 10 percent inflation? Well, uh, this is something that um, has to be dealt with um, on the uh, contractual basis. You know, it's also, again, uh, as a service means that you are giving a price and the advantage of the, of your customer is that he has certainty on availability for a certain price. When there are spikes like now, inflation um, based on, okay, why do we have that inflation? Also very difficult to, to really pin it down to one or two uh, elements. I think this is a question of fairness in a partnership to have agreements that when you go beyond a certain inflation, mm -hmm. you have to adjust your price. Not easy, Antoine. So point taken. It's an extreme situation. But again, we are experiencing it. So probably we can also factor that in True. into our thoughts. And honestly, I think for us, it's the first time we are experiencing that. Oh yeah, that Absolutely. high inflation. Yeah, right? purely so, old, yeah. but but to me, yeah. for 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 the two of us, right? <laughs> no. Hey guys, come on, yeah. what are you doing? No. Sorry. <laughs> for, 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 final, 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 final question, Balaza. I mean, we we run over the the four. You're still laughing. I can't. Yeah. No. no. We run over the four business model for you as CEO from acceptance. Which one is the most important for you as company? Um, well, we are, um, as I said at the beginning, we are serving into all business models. Yeah. 
but uh, we want to evolve more ourselves into the what we discussed as a service mm -hmm. but the uh, build operate and transfer in brackets <laughs> this is this is the two models that i'm i'm looking um no longer capex for no capex is integral part of what yeah. we do look look also at the uh, spare parts or, or, or all brownfield this is capex because you don't need to No, but even for, for brownfield projects, you can have other business models. Of course, you can, uh, and and it's a great opportunity. But most, I'm I'm talking smaller brownfield. I'm talking after sales or mm. replacements that are pretty standard. And again, as I said, I think you have to be able to compete there. This is the basis in order to strive for more. So that doesn't mean we are leaving uh, that place. No, no. Of course, we 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 are going to be in all business models uh, present, but there is more passion for the one or the other. I guess that's the right point in time to, to bring you into that conversation, actually, because we've been discussing four of the 64 or thousands of business models. Maybe you have a different experience. You are dealing with different business models and maybe there's an elephant in the room which we missed, which happens sometimes. So just drop us a comment. Tell us what we should be taking if we do, again, an underrated, overrated session with other business models. I think we could do like 10 of them with 10 different topics. So. Up to you. Tell us in the comments what you think about all of that. And with that said, Baldessar, thanks a lot for hosting us here. And thanks for the very insightful conversation. Thanks for and the game. thanks for, for yeah. comforting me in the fact that we are the young people and he's a bit old-minded. But Thanks for sharing all your experiences. <laughs> <laughs> so Italy, France, <laughs> off the list. <laughs> Never ever holidays. <laughs> Thank you, no, guys. Thanks. thanks. Much appreciated. So Antoine, hopefully he was listening carefully to me and Baldassare about the business models in our water industry, right? You and Baldassare, come on. We ended up agreeing, you and me most of the time, and he disagreed with us. That sounds weird to me, that we both agree. Yeah, what's even weirder to me is that he's the CEO of a water industry group, so if I had to believe someone from us three, it would rather be him. So maybe we go back and listen to what he said. I hope you liked it, because honestly, from the inside, it was so cool to have that conversation. So drop us a comment and let us know what you thought about it. But even on my editorial, sorry for interrupt you, but even on my editorial, he was agreeing with me. <laughs> so he's agreeing all the time. So he started no. with something very positive this year. Thank you Actually, very much. He's a black or white person. So as a shades of gray person, I have to say that sometimes I agree with him because even a broken clock is right twice a day. So who's a broken clock? You, right? No, you are. <laughs> okay, but I had a little fun in that first show of the year. I hope you had some fun as well. And I have to say, Björn, honestly, now it's about time for me to go back to France. Three shows in a row in Germany, that's too much. Really? Can I leave, please? But only because of your kids. Okay. <laughs> that's nice of you. Thank you very much for watching us. See you very soon and I let and you go. And about.